You guys, you gotta be really, really quiet. I got a baby. <laughs> He's got a baby. <laughs> He's got a baby. <laughs> All right, Andrew, what are we doing today? All right, guys, today we're working on handstand walking. You guys asked for it, we deliver. I have a whole little progressional thing we're gonna go through from very, very basic for some of you guys that have never even, you know, got up onto a handstand before to some of you guys that are already handstand walking, how can I improve my handstand walking, essentially. Cool. Yep. Cool. All right, cool. so let's get started. So our first little progressional drill that we're gonna talk about for the handstand walking portion today is just gonna be working on body weight shifting uh, hand to hand. So I'm gonna have Jake get into a normal plank position Okay, and what we wanna keep is the midline intact. So my hips to shoulders are gonna stay in one strong line. They're gonna to move together, and he's gonna slowly start to work on pulling up to his fingers on one side, right? Shifting his body weight over, and then the other side. And he's just gonna do two or three on each side. You can see he's just shifting body weight as I go from the front view here, back and forth. Now, if this is easy, then we start bringing up the hand off the floor and we start tapping shoulders back and forth. This is the absolute very basic progression of just learning how to brace single arm. So when you guys are walking and you're having to pick your hand up, everything is nice and flowing together. That is the plank hand weight transfer and plank shoulder tap. Here is the next progression. So if you guys have mastered the floor, we now add a little weight to your, not weight, but a box to your feet here to now put yourself into a pike. I'm actually gonna have Jake back his hands up even further because we wanna get as close to a pike as we can. See how he's just tucked his head through? That's even better yet. And again, we're gonna do the same progression. So I'm gonna come from the front. I'm gonna have him just work on moving his hands, right, back and forth, side to side. His feet are not gonna move on the box. He's gonna maintain his pike position. And then when he's mastered that, he's gonna go ahead and take the whole hand off and touch opposite shoulder. And again, working on weight transfer, balance back and forth, bracing, right? Smooth transfer of his weight back and forth. And then we're gonna go ahead and relax for a second, let him rest. So you guys have now mastered that. We now add in another element, which is gonna be an actual movement. So we're gonna go ahead and do some 180 or 360 degrees walks, whatever you wanna to get to uh, around the box. The biggest thing here for people is to make sure you maintain the distance from your hands to the box. So what happens is we get our hands further and further away and it becomes more and more of a, almost a push-up position, less of a pike position. So we're gonna hold the pike and Jake's gonna slide one hand at a time and he's gonna slowly walk around my box one hand at a time. See how he's still having to pick a hand up at a t one hand at a time? He's having to balance and weight transfer. Notice also the feet do not move from the middle of the box and he's gonna make his way all the way back around to the front to where he started and he can stay right there. That is the walk around the box drill for your handstand walking progression. So you've mastered the box, right? So we're gonna move on to the wall. This is the next progression for some of you guys that are learning how to handstand walk. We're gonna do a wall walk. So we call these nose and toes. So he's gonna go ahead and put his hands on the ground, walk his feet all the way up into a handstand position, okay? And we wanna get as tight to the wall as we can, right? And again, we're gonna start very basic. He's just gonna worry about rolling up onto the fingertips. We're just trying to, uh, to move some weight here. Right, back and forth, side to side. When he feels comfortable enough, he's gonna start to pick up the whole hand and start touching the shoulder. If you wanna get more aggressive, touch the thigh on the same side. Yeah, there we go. And he's still maintaining his nose and toes position. Go ahead and relax, Jake, and rest out of that. Right, that is the next progressional level for you guys to start moving your hands off the ground, side to side. Next one up is gonna be some good old fashioned freestanding handstand work. So we need to get really good at being able to balance better uh, on the hands. So feeling the body weight from the palms to the fingers, being able to manipulate that. So what I'm gonna have Jake do is we're gonna have to go into this nose and toes position. He's gonna pull one foot off, right? And he's gonna push off with the other foot and start coming off the wall with both feet. And now he can start to feel the balance in the fingers and in the palms, right? Almost like he's gripping the floor like they're a set of feet, right? Just like we have with our own feet. He's trying to make a little arch in his hand and he's gonna push off and still work on handstand freestanding holds, right? For about 20 to 30 seconds and then he'll come down and relax and rest. So that is the next progression to getting used to being able to pick your hands up is getting yourself 
to get into a freestanding position. I might kick his baby. Okay guys, so next progression is gonna be working on kipping up. So you've kinda of mastered the wall a little bit, you're getting a little bit more familiar with the freestanding handstand holds, you're getting a lot better at controlling your body weight on your hands, knowing where to push back from on the fingers and the palms, right? So now we gotta work on just kicking up to it. So what I'm gonna have Jake do is turn around and he's gonna kick up. If you have a partner for this, which is AKA me, I'm gonna hold a hand out, he's gonna kinda of kick up, feel for my hand, and my arm's just gonna push him back down. So he gets used to kicking up. And now I like to teach is uh, dominant leg straight up first. So we're gonna go one, one leg up, not both legs at the same time, so you have to push against the floor, right? And then I'm just gonna push both legs back down, okay? He's gonna kick up for it, feel for it, there it is. I'm gonna push back down. He's gonna do it again, kick up. There it is, push back down. He can get a little bit aggressive with it because I'm not gonna let him go further than this, right? And then let's do one more, great. I'm almost holding him up and then I'm gonna push him back down. So that's the partner help on the kick up position. And then when, if you were gonna do that again, we could have him start to hold it a little bit longer so he can start to feel. I could almost let go a little bit. And again, he's in that freestanding handstand position, uh, handstand hold position that we had before. So that is the partner help on the kicking up. Now let's show it if you don't have any friends and you're at the gym by yourself. That's next. All right, so if you don't have a friend, okay, or someone have, that- I don't have a friend. Jake doesn't have a friend, no right? Friends. We're just acquaintances. If you don't have a friend at the gym that wants to work on this with you and you're by yourself and you want to work on kipping up, a great way to do that is use the rig. So what we have here is a very thick uh, green elastic band that we use in classes for a bunch of different stuff. We're gonna tie it across the J hooks on the rig. I usually say at least shoulder height, uh, obviously because you want to be tall enough that your heels or lower calf hits it and that's going to be our pushback. So Jake's going to set up, right? Winston's going to be a spotter <laughs> and he's going to kick up again. One foot up high, he's going to feel the band against his ankle, his calf, or in his case his lower knee, which is fine. He's going to raise it up a little bit. Same thing, right? He's just feeling that position and the band allows a little bit of a tug back to pull him back down to the floor each time. And again, let's kick up one more, Jake, hold this for a second. He can start pulling off his feet a little bit and start feeling the handstand at the bottom with his hands in the freestanding position almost a little bit. He can start feeling the weight transfer in the fingers and the, and the palms and knowing how to control that a little bit. So that is a great way to, to work on your kick up into your handstand walk if you do not have a partner. So check that out, that's always a great idea. So now you've gone through all the progressions and you're like, hey, Andrew, Jake, I'm ready to walk. Sweet, right? You got your partner with you, great, because they can be a guider, I'm gonna be the guider today. So we're gonna go ahead and he's gonna kick up, Jake's gonna kick up into my arm, and on the first try through, he's gonna actually try to stay in contact with my arm. So I'm gonna kinda lead him, guide him through a few, uh, few walks. He's just gonna take probably like two or three steps with his hands, we'll come back down and we'll reset. The second one, I'm not gonna guide him anymore, I'm just gonna be there as a, as a safety net for him as he kicks up and starts his handstand walk. So, when he's right in the line of traffic, Jake's gonna kick up. I'm gonna hold him, right? He's gonna stay in line. I got him up, a couple of steps, and I'm gonna push him back down. Perfect, okay? Next one, he's gonna kick up, and I'm gonna just take my hand off right away, and he's gonna start moving, right? So kick up, I got him, hand is off, right? And he's kinda leaning forward with the heels, boom, done, right? So you can start working on helping your partner out a little bit, starting by just providing a safety net with your arm, giving them a little guidance, take that safety net and make it a little bit further away, right? Make it a little bit harder for them to start moving their hands and then forcing them to have to lean forward a little bit to get some of their body weight to carry them forward. So that is the handstand walk. So you just went through uh, Jacob Hepner's and myself's uh, little progression on how to one, either get some handstand walking if you've never done that before, two, uh, ways to maybe improve your handstand walking. We can all improve on that, whether it's being a little bit tighter in your handstand hold, whether it's just being a little bit better at weight shifting, things like that. So don't think that these drills are the basic ones, you won't get anything out of it. You definitely will, uh, especially if you're even more advanced. I had Jake do the entire thing, and even he said his shoulders were smoked and tired. So it was a great job for him to, to just see those kind of progressions, and it works for you as well. So let me ask this. If I'm doing, if someone says handstand walks in an open workout or in my gym, 
what's a good scaling option if I can't handstand walk? So you can do a couple of things. One is the box around the, the around the box walk that's that we hard. showed. The pike one, that's very hard, okay? You could scale that to however far the feed is for people to walk. You could say, okay, I'm gonna do one lap around my box. Or if it's 100 feet, maybe I'll do two laps around my box. The other one is then to obviously try to get into more of a handstand hold and we start doing taps. Maybe you set a certain amount of taps to the hip or the shoulder, like 50 feet, I'm gonna try and do uh, 20 total taps, so 10 each side. Or maybe it's 100 feet, I'm gonna try 30 taps, 15 each side. So those are great ways to scale the handstand walk in your classes or in your workouts when you're still working on the actual handstand movement itself instead of just bypassing it all together. Sure, cool, cool. So, we did handstand walks. If you don't have them, basics, I mean, even I got stuff out of that. Out of some of those drills. Oh like yeah, those, for sure. Hurt my neck, but Going from just basic plank work to getting into a handstand, that is the basic stuff to, to really just focus on. Cool. So what do you want to do next week? I don't know. What do you want to do next I week? I don't know. We've heard butterfly pull-ups. Butterfly pull-ups? But I say we call them about. dolphin pull-ups. So we could work on dolphin pull-ups next week. So bring your dolphin fin and your best dolphin call. And give me your best dolphin call right now. It sounds okay. like a crow. On that <laughs> note, we're going to call it. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and call that a day. Thanks, guys. Day. Appreciate you guys watching. Thanks, guys.